Hey everybody, welcome to the War Boss Fitch channel, and today we are here to talk about the Soul Snatchers Cults, or Grim Dark Future. Now as we go through this army, I'm going to be throwing up some pictures that are from Games Workshop, just because that seems to be where a lot of people start their hobby journey, is with Games Workshop products. So this is going to show what you can take from that line to play in OPR. But again, OPR is model agnostic. You can use whatever you want as long as it kind of fits. Which is something I did in today's battle once we get to it. You'll see. So we are going to start where we normally start, down with the rules. We got a nice big chunk agitator. This model and its unit gets furious. If they already had furious, they get extra hits from furious on unmodified rolls of 5 or 6 instead. And with Furious, whenever you roll a 6 in a melee on the turn that you charged, it counts as an extra hit. So this roll doubles your Furious hits. Cult Banner, this model and its unit gets Regeneration. And Regeneration is whenever you fail an armor save on a roll of a 5+, plus, you ignore that wound. Experiments, when in melee, roll 1 die and apply 1 bonus to all models with this rule. On a 1 to a 3, attacks get rending. And on a 4 to a 6, attacks get AP 1. And we'll talk about rending here. Rending means that if you roll a 6 to hit, your attack goes to AP 4. And all of your rending attacks ignore regeneration. Glare Gun, once per this unit's activation, pick one friendly unit within 12, which gets plus 2 inches on advance and plus 4 inches on rush and charge next time it moves. Megaphone, this model and its unit move plus 2 on advance and plus 4 on rush and charge. And we'll pop over to Tactical Console. Once per this unit's activation, before attacking, pick one other friendly unit within 12, which may move by up to 6. So all three of those together show that movement is a big thing with this army. Resistance, when taking a wound, roll one die and then a 6 plus it is ignored. If the wound was from a spell, then it is ignored on a 2 plus instead. It's just another layer of defenses you could put on your units. Spotter. Once per this unit's activation, before attacking, pick one friendly unit within 12, which gets plus 6 inch range next time it shoots. Survey Vehicle. Once per this unit's activation, before attacking, pick one enemy unit within 18. Next time a friendly unit shoots at it, it gets plus 1 to hit. Take down once per game when this model attacks in melee, you may pick one model in the unit as its target and make one attack at quality two with AP one and deadly three, which is resolved as if it is a unit of one. So what this rule allows you to do is to pick your target like a hero leading an enemy unit or any one of the specialists inside the enemy squad and take them out with this one attack. And then warning cry, Enemy units using ambush must be set up over 12 inches away from this model, giving you a little extra cushion to push back ambushers. So those are all the rules. Let's go ahead and move down to spells. And here are the spells. We don't really talk about the offensive ones, just the defense and the buff ones, because the offensive ones, they just do what they say in the tin. So let's start to look at the other spells. Stimulant. 1. Target 2 friendly units within 12. They get furious next time they charge. Hypnosis. 2. Target 2 friendly units within 12. They get plus 1 to defense rolls next time they take hits. And Mind Control. Target 2 enemy units within 18. They move minus 3 inches next time they advance or minus 4 next time they charge or rush. I wouldn't say they're the best buffing spells we've seen, but getting furious on a single spell power with some of the melee units you have in this army, that is a pretty big deal. So that is it for the spells. Let's go ahead and hop right into the army list and start going over the units. Now we are going to start at the top with a Soul Snatcher Matriarch. Quality three, defense three, caster three, fast, fear of one, hero, scout, strider, and toughness three. Now I'll talk about some of these rules as we come across them the first time. That way you'll know what they are when we talk about them later. Caster 3 gives you 3 magical dice per turn to spend on the different spells. Using points for the spell powers there, like Psychic Blaze would cost 
three spell power and stimulant only cost one and with caster three you get three points every turn holding up to a maximum of six fast means you get an extra two inches of movement when you use advance and an extra four inches when you use a rush or a charge fear of one this model counts as having dealt x plus one wounds when checking who won melee and that's to figure out who has to take the morale test hero just means it can be put inside of a squad scout means that after deployment you can put this model 12 inches outside of your deployment zone so it starts the battle in the middle of the board strider means you ignore the effects of difficult terrain whenever you move in toughness three it's going to take three wounds to kill this model and the soul snatcher matriarch comes with a heavy claw giving it four attacks ap1 with rending and the options you have here is to give it resistance with a psychic idol or warning cry with a pet familiar so the soul snatcher matriarch you are usually going to find this leading a squad of soul snatchers using all of its psychic powers to buff that unit and the units around it but in a pinch it could run around on its own as a little psychic powerhouse getting three magic points a turn means that it could run around and throw out psychic blaze every turn putting hurt into the enemy next unit is the cult leader quality four defense five hero scout and toughness three two shots with a cult pistol at 12 inches and two attacks with a close combat weapon now for the rules that can affect its unit that it's in we have experiments which is the one where you figure out if you get rending or ap1 agitator giving the unit furious or extra furious if it already had it megaphone giving the unit extra movement cult manner to give the unit regeneration caster 2 to give it access to the spell chart or tactical console that allows it to move a other unit six inches you could change out the pistol for a burst pistol or a sniper rifle and you can replace the cult pistol and close combat weapon with a sabotage charge one attack ap1 with blast three a syringe goad one attack ap2 deadly three or an array of close combat weapons for three attacks ap1 with poison and the last upgrade you can give them is a bike that gives them fast now with all these different upgrades that you can give your units it's just a question of what you want this character to do in that unit so as we build some squads as we go along we'll be throwing in some cult leaders just to see what kind of buffs we can put out there next unit is the cult hitman quality four defense five hero scout takedown and toughness three two attacks 12 inches with a pistol and two attacks with a close combat weapon you have the option to switch out the cult pistol with a burst pistol and a duelist pistol and you can replace the pistol and close combat weapon with a toxic blade or a dual sword each of them giving you four attacks at ap1 with either poison or rending now this hero has no squad buffing rules to him looks like it's made to either operate alone or just to be able to put in the unit to either increase its quality for morale tests or to give a little bit extra damage or just operate alone to be a tiny target that you could easily hide to reach out and snag or contest objectives next unit is the brute champion quality three defense four hero regeneration scout and toughness three comes with a sledgehammer which is one attack ap2 with blast of three and you could upgrade it with resistance with a psychic idol or warning cry with a pet familiar again there's no squad buffs on this character and again this one is only toughness three either meant to add some melee damage to a squad or operate alone so let's start looking at some multi-model units our first one is minions you get 10 of them in the squad quality 5 defense 5 no special rules but they all have rifles for one shot at 24 and one attack with close combat weapons you can replace up to two of those rifles with fusion rifles plasma rifles drum rifles grenade launchers or flamers being a quality 5 unit and being cheap ish at 115 points these are going to be your backline objective holding units maybe have them hiding in cover somewhere so they get extra defenses to just take some pot shots at the enemy as they expose themselves and with quality five i would not worry about upgrading any of the weapons if anything it would be the flamer just to give them reliable 
That way you're almost guaranteeing attacks with the quality of two on those. As far as adding a cult leader into the unit, I feel like that is almost a waste. Because of the validation rules, you're only allowed to have, at 2,000 points that I play at, you're only allowed to have three of a specific unit. And putting a cult leader into a minion squad feels counterintuitive when you can put that cult leader into any other squad. Next unit is the support minions. Quality 5, defense 5, toughness 3. Comes with mortars, which are one shot at 30 inches with blast and indirect with two attacks apiece from the crew. And you can replace the mortars with a heavy machine gun, missile launcher, laser cannon, or auto cannon. Now, even though they're quality five, I think support minions just armed with the basic mortars are good to have around. 135 points giving you three shots that are going to ignore all the terrain to hit the enemy with blast of three. I think that damage will add up over the course of the game. And if you get lucky with an initial barrage with like a three hits, you could do a whole lot of serious damage with these units. Not anything I'd put a character in. But I think it'd be good to have one or maybe two of these squads just to lob shots at the enemy the whole game. Next unit are Neophytes. Quality 4, Defense 5, and they have Scout. They all have rifles for one shot at 24 and close combat weapons for one attack. You can upgrade one of the models with the Cult Standard, giving them Fear of 2. You can replace any of the rifles with shotguns for two attacks AP1 at 12 inches. And you can replace one of the rifles with a Web Carbine, Flamer, Grenade Launcher, Quick Quake Cannon, Mining Laser, Sniper Rifle, or a Heavy Machine Gun. You can replace one of the rifles and a Close Combat Weapon with a Pistol Close Combat Weapon or a Web Pistol Close Combat Weapon. And you can replace one of the Close Combat Weapons with a Heavy Pick for two attacks AP1 with Rending, or a Heavy Mace for two attacks AP4. Now here, we get to a spot where we can start to play around with stuff. If you want to go for a shooty squad here, we have a Cult Leader with the Megaphone giving them a little bit extra movement. And we swapped all the rifles out for shotguns, giving this squad of 10, well, 11 guys, 20 shots at 12 inches with AP1. Whenever I'm trying to make a shooty squad, I love shotguns, just because normally I end up being that close anyways, because I'm just, I guess, an aggressive player. And laying down that many shots, something is gonna go through. Next unit is Acolytes. Quality 4, Defense 5, Scout and Strider, Pistols for 1 attack at 12 inches, and Mutant Claws for 2 attacks at AP1. You can also give them the Cult Standard for Fear of 2, Upgrade, Replace 1 Pistol for a Flamer Pistol, 1 Shot Blast 3 Reliable at 6 inches. You can replace 1 Pistol and Mutant Claws for Demo Charge, Heavy Cutter, Heavy Drill, Whipping Blade, or a Heavy Buzzsaw. Replace a pistol and mutant claws with a sergeant pistol and a sergeant hand weapon, and then replace the sergeant hand weapon with a blade claw or a razor whip. So this is the more melee focused squad where the neophytes were mostly going to be focused on shooting. So for here, taking a cult leader with an agitator giving them furious is a good option to have just because you're going to have so many melee attacks coming out of this squad, giving you more of a chance to get the furious extra attacks. But if you do this, you do lose Strider because the cult leader doesn't have it. I mean, you still have Strider with the squad, but if you're planning on traveling through difficult terrain for more than a handful of inches, that cult leader is going to drag them back. But two heavy buzz saws with three attacks a piece of AP4 is going to be where you're going to be doing most of your damage here. Given the cult leader, an array of close combat weapons is going to give you 19 AP1 melee attacks. And with the two heavy buzz saws, you're looking at six AP4 melee attacks. So this squad here, all this comes in at 340 points. You're going to be able to take out normal infantry squads with all the AP1 attacks. And the heavy buzz saws are there to take out the very heavy infantry or to even threaten tanks with six attacks AP4. Even the heaviest tanks are not going to want to get charged by this squad. Next unit are the Mutant Brutes. Quality 3, Defense 4. They have Regeneration and Scout. They have Heavy Picks with 2 attacks at AP1 with Rending. You can replace one of the Heavy Picks with a Heavy Hammer for a Blast of 3, a Pick Hammer for AP2 Deadly 3, or a Great Weapon for 3 attacks AP4. I really wish that you could swap all of the heavy picks out for one of those weapon options. 
and without the ability to do that two attacks a piece ap1 with rending for most of the unit i just i just don't really like this unit it, it feels like it is lacking something but that's fine because we're going to be getting to where the real power is in the army we get to our first unit of soul snatchers quality three defense four fast scout and strider they all have heavy claws for two attacks apiece at AP1 with rending. And you can upgrade one model in the unit with a mind snatcher for caster one. These are a shock assault infantry. Fast, Scout, and Strider. They're going to start at the midpoint of the board. They're going to be able to reach into the enemy's deployment zone on turn one. And when you upgrade them with mind snatcher, giving a caster one, every turn you're going to be able to try to throw a stimulant on yourself. Get your unit and another unit within 12, Furious. And then if you combine the unit, you have two caster ones. So you can either try to cast it on a three using both of their spell power, or try to cast it on a four twice in case the first one didn't work. And if you do that, you have 20 attacks at AP one with rending, hitting on a three, and all of your sixes are extra hits. Against most troops that is going to do a whole lot of damage but they are not meant to go after vehicles fishing for sixes with your rending it's probably not going to be enough to make vehicles care all of that much the next unit is elite snatchers quality three defense three ambush fast regeneration and strider two attacks a piece with heavy claws at ap1 with rending and they also have the option for a mind snatcher so the Elite Snatchers are the same as the Soul Snatchers, except plus one defense, regeneration, and the ability to ambush. So you can have these drop out of the ceiling on top of the enemy, which is exactly what you should do with them. Give them the Mind Snatcher to try to get off that Furious. The only question is, do you want units of five or do you want units of ten? Next unit we come to are the Minion Bikers. Quality five, defense five, fast, scout, and toughness three. They all have rifles for one shot at 24 and two attacks apiece with close combat weapons. You can replace any rifle with a burst pistol, shotgun, or grenade launcher, and you can replace one close combat weapon with a heavy hammer, heavy pick, heavy axe, or heavy mace. Now taken on their own, now a squad of three of these is going to be pretty much combat ineffective to start with. Three shots out to 24 or six attacks in close combat, you're hitting out of five. What you're going to want to do with these is keep them hidden, keep them safe, and towards the end of the game, run out and try to grab objectives. Because even giving them shotguns, you are getting too close to the enemy, and anything that you shoot at, if it survives, should be able to charge into you. And with your defense of five, this squad of bikers won't be around for very long. Next unit is the Minion Quad Bike. Quality five, defense five, fast scout and toughness six so this is a tough bugger comes with a mining laser one shot ap3 deadly three a burst pistol for three shots at 12 inches and two attacks with close combat weapon you can switch out the mining laser for a heavy machine gun or a heavy flamer now unlike the bikes the minion quad bike i think is in a pretty good spot just keeping it with the mining laser having one shot with ap3 deadly three it's tiny. It's only 85 points. I would take a couple of these as little pocket anti-tank to roll around and support your infantry units. Now we get into the vehicles. Our first one is the attack vehicle. Quality 4, defensive 2, fast, impact 3, scout, and toughness 6. Comes with a heavy machine gun, 3 shots, AP1 at 30 inches, and a heavy mining laser. 1 shot, AP3, deadly 3 at 24. You can replace that heavy mining laser with a heavy mortar for one shot AP1 Blast 3 indirect at 36. And you can upgrade it with a spotter, which gives a friendly unit within 12 plus 6 inch range. A flare gun, which gives one friendly unit within 12 plus 2 or plus 4 inches whenever they move. Or a survey vehicle, where you pick one enemy with 18 and the next time it gets shot at, everyone is plus 1 to hit to it. So this is a fun little unit. I would not replace the heavy mining laser with a heavy mortar. I would stick with the heavy mining laser. If I had the option to replace the heavy machine gun with another heavy mining laser, I would definitely do it, giving it a defined path. 
but with its attacks split up between 1 damage AP 1 and 3 damage AP 3, this is where you're going to want to split your fire. Sticking with the infantry to help them with the heavy machine gun and using the heavy mining laser to shoot any vehicle that might come close enough. And then flare guns to support your melee troops and survey vehicle to support your shooting troops. Next unit is the light APC. Quality 4, defense 2, fast, impact 3, toughness 6, transport 11. Comes with two heavy flamers for one shot apiece. AP1, blast 3, reliable at 12 inches. You can replace the heavy flamers with heavy machine guns. You replace one of the heavy flamers with a laser machine gun. You can upgrade it with a pintle machine gun. And you can upgrade it with a dozer blade or camouflage netting for strider and stealth. And you can give it a hunter missile, one shot AP2, deadly 3, limited lock on, 24 inch range. So normally with APCs, my thought is to keep them as cheap as you can. Their main job is moving your troops around, not really being offensive. But here, if you want them to be offensive, heavy flamer for up close and personal, heavy machine gun for range stuff, laser machine guns for some anti-tank, it's a versatile machine, just give it what you think it needs. Next unit is the Grinder Truck. Quality 4, Defensive 2, Fast, Impact 3, Strider, Toughness 9, and Transport 6. Heavy Machine Gun 3 tags, AP 1 at 30, and a Quake Cannon 2 shots, Blast 3, Rending at 24. You replace the Heavy Quake Cannon with a Heavy Mining Laser for 2 shots, AP 3, Deadly 3 or a heavy incinerator for two shots, AP-1 Blast 3, reliable at 18. And you can upgrade it with the Great Grinder to give it impact plus five. Now, this is the inner orc in me talking. Forget all the other options. Great Grinder, take multiples, run over your enemies, and giggle the entire time. Next unit is the Mining Truck. Quality four, defense two, fast, impact three, toughness nine, transport 11, comes with a twin auto cannon for six shots at AP2 at 36 and a heavy machine gun three shots AP1 at 30. There are no upgrades on the unit and it is rather expensive for what it is. Consider this your heavy APC and then the twin auto cannon falling squarely in what I think is the best AP bracket in the game at AP2 able to pull double duty taking on light and heavier targets this would be a good option to transport stuff and be a more offensive armored personnel carrier. Next unit is the Battle Tank. Quality 4, Defense 2, Fast, Impact 6, Toughness 12, Nova Cannon, 1 shot, AP 1, Blast of 6, and Twin Heavy Flamers for 2 shots, AP 1, Blast 3, and Reliable. Now this is a tank coming straight out of the Human Defense Force. We've already done a video on those, and you can see all of the options that you can give it. And as far as what options I would suggest, the rest of your army pretty much has anti-infantry on lockdown. So I would focus on stuff like the anti-tank cannon, heavy auto cannon, siege cannon even, heavy fusion rifles, laser cannons. Anything that you can get this battle tank to deal with enemy tanks, I think is going to be your best bet in this army. And then last unit for the Soul Snatcher Cults is the Light Walker. Quality 4, Defense 2, Fear of 1, and Toughness 6. Comes with a Twin Heavy Flamer and 2 attacks, AP 1 with Stomp. And you can replace the Twin Heavy Flamer with Twin Heavy Machine Gun, Twin Missile Launcher, Twin Laser Cannon, Twin Auto Cannon, Twin Plasma Cannon, or Twin Laser Machine Gun. Now something you don't see much in this army is AP 4. You can spec units into it for melee, but not much in shooting, or at least not much in long range AP4 shooting. So for that case and that case alone, I am being drawn to the twin plasma cannon here. Two shots, AP4 blast three at 30 inches. I think that would make a real mess of units like the Battle Brothers or any elite style infantry the enemy has. Plus, I'm having the urge to do a lot of plasma stuff lately. I'm just in a weird phase right now. So that was the rules and units for the Soul Snatcher Cults. Now we're going to go out to the garage and have ourselves a game where I have built a army around a theme. 
Is it very competitive? Not very, but it is going to be fun, and that's what counts. So I'll see you out there. Welcome back to the garage, everybody. If you can't tell, this army is running on a theme. Like I knew I wanted a whole bunch of Soul Snatchers, and I didn't exactly want to do all OPR Soul Snatchers, so this is what I came up with. Now, what do we got in this army? It is 2,000 points. We have... Two squads of 10 Soul Snatchers. Each of these squads of Soul Snatchers have two Caster 1s in each of them. It was a squad of five with a Caster 1, then I combined the unit, so I have two Caster 1s. And each of those are led by a Matriarch, who is a Caster 3 in their own right. So because this isn't a, like, Acolyte squad, or this isn't one of those squads where you add everything up, we're going to have, in each one of these squads here, three Casters. One, one, three... So there's going to be a whole lot of spells getting thrown out of these squads. And then we have another squad of five. There's no caster in this squad. This is the regular soul snatchers. And then we have two squads of elite snatchers back here that are going to be ambushing in because they're coming out of the walls, man. And this is who they're going to be playing today. This is my first Dwarf Guild's army. This is the Dwarf Guild army that I made before OPR decided to make Dwarf Guild's. These models you can see here, this is a set called Tactical Dwarfs. These I made myself. They are a digital kit bash using StarCraft Marines, NASA astronaut helmets, and just random bolt gun files that I found. And these are mono wheel droids. And I can't remember if I put those little lasers on the side or if they came that way. And then in the back, we have two original Space Marine dreadnoughts that I have converted up and painted up to be in this army. I did an army showcase on these before and I knew I had to get them on the table for a actual battle video and this is the perfect opportunity. So what do we have in the list? There are two squads of warriors with just rifles, a squad of 10 warriors here with shotguns, two squads of battle suits. They have the storm rifles and the grenade launchers along with, I think it was the energy hammers, the ones that have the blast damage. Two dwarf walkers armed with fists and a twin machine gun. And then two squads of five gun drones out of the Dow Union Codex. Yes, I am mixing army lists today. And no, I am not sorry for it. And this is the table we are going to be playing on today. This is the abandoned, infected bunker system that the Soul Snatchers have taken over. Now, the mission that we're going to be doing today is a custom mission. I just kind of made this one up on the fly. It is going to be a variant of a kill point mission. Both armies are going to fight for four turns, and whoever has the most number of points left on the board is going to be the winner. There's going to be, oh, that's 2,000 points. Let's say there's going to be a 200-point buffer. So if they kill within 200 points of each other, it will be a tie. And as you can see... We're starting to look like actual gamers here. And I got a little dice rolling thing with new dice. So we can just do like, you know, straight table rolling of the dice. So we'll see how that turns out. So Uncle C is going to be playing the dwarfs today. I am going to be playing the xenomorphs and the xenomorphs get a three. <laughs> and the dwarfs get a two and we're already missing the box. So here is the dwarf deployment spread across all the different fire lanes here, anchored in the middle by the two walkers. And then the Xenomorph deployment looks like this, but everybody has Scout. So they all have Scout, and we're going to do the Scout moves. So that's where they end up. Well, oh, this squad's out of frame. That squad ended up there. So let's go ahead and start turn number one. So first activation, this squad of Soul Snatchers slash Xenomorphs is going to be charging into that squad over there. And they're going to end up there. So let's go ahead and move the camera to put our new dice box out. We are going to do some psychic shenanigans. We have two caster ones and a caster three. So we're going to start off one of the caster ones is going to cast Stimulant on its own squad. 
looking for a four. And it goes off. And then the Matriarch is going to cast Psychic Blaze. Three points. It is a caster. Three. Two enemy units within 12. Take six hits each. Looking for a four. And it fails to go off. So the squad has Furious, but no Psychic Explosions. And then we have one caster who's just going to hold on to its little casting dice. So we got this many of attacks hitting on a three with Furious. That's a lot of ones and twos. So those are the hits. We got two sixes and they are rending. So these become AP four and everything else, AP one. So we got two that are gonna be on a six cause they are rending. So there's two and the rest are on a five. So it looks like that whole squad of five is just gonna be gone. And they're gonna end up like that. The dwarf is going to move four inches, dwarf walker over there, and he's going to be able to draw a line to where he could just see the back end of that xenomorph right there. So firing his twin machine gun, go ahead and fire, look for three. We got two misses. AP one, so saving out a five with cover, which means they're going to go back to a four. Still lose two. The bit. So over here, this squad of Soul Snatchers is just, just out of range. But you know, we got to do it. Otherwise, they'll just be a Mexican standoff. So here we go. So they make their move to there. So we can throw some spells, though. The Matriarch there in the middle is going to get boosted by the other two casters for plus one each. So it's going to be plus two, firing off a Psychic Blaze at these two squads. Looking for a two. There we go. So it will be six hits on each squad. So lead squad saving on four. They're going to lose three. And second squad saving on a four. Lose two. So the squad with two guys needs a morale test. And they're going to fail. So they're going to be pinned. Or stunned. So what the dwarfs are going to do with this squad here with the shotguns, they are just going to rack them and stack them and fire down the hallway, hitting on a four. Eight hits. So with these, they are AP1 shotguns. We are going to be saving on a five. Oh, that's pretty good. We lose th only three of them. So bip, bip, bip. So that's the activation for the Soul Snatchers. These guys here, they are just going to hug this wall because I'm not sure which direction they are going to go next turn. We'll figure it out when it happens. Over here, we got some drones. They are going to turn and fire. That's right. Hitting on a four with good shots. Ooh, and they are rending. So we got three sixes right there. So we got the sixes, the ones that are AP4. We got one save. So there goes two. And the rest saving on a four. Losing one more, so they lose three. One, two, three. Not quite at half yet. First off, we are going to unpin or unstun, recover, whatever the wording is for those guys. And then over here for the Dwarf Walker. Yeah, moving forward to there. And then last unit to activate is going to be those little riflemen back there. What you doing? I'll just hold for now. They're just going to be holding for now. Turn number one, the Soul Snatchers that were there, they have sprung their trap, at least on one flank. The other flank, somehow their armor held against all those shotguns. Now on turn number two, they are going to start coming out of the walls. First unit of elite Soul Snatchers dropped out nine inches in front of the Dwarf Walker. The unit of Dwarf Power Suits here dropped nine inches from them. Second squad of Elite Soul Snatchers dropped out nine inches away from that walker. And then another unit of Power Suit Guard dropping right behind them. First activation of the official start of turn number two. We're going to have this squad charge into him. They're going to get stuck in right there. Two attacks apiece, AP1 with rending, hitting on a three, no furious on this squad. Ooh, not that great. 11 hits and only two of them are rending. Two saves on a six. There's gonna be two wounds, the rest on a three. 
for another one. So we did three wounds total. Stomping first, AP1 hitting out of three. One hit, seven out of five, fails. And the AP2 with the fist on a three. Two more hits, seven on a six. Hey, look at that. So it was three wounds caused to one wound caused, but the walker has fear, fear of two. So that means it's gonna be a tied combat. So what happens is the soul snatchers back up an inch. Oh, and I gotta take one. So over here on this flank again, these dwarfs are just gonna rack their shotguns. Two shots apiece, hitting on a four, AP one. Looking a lot better this time. So 11 hits, saving all five. Ooh, this time did not get lucky. So he only saved four, seven go down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, that leaves just the matriarch who needs a morale test and she passes. Next activation, our elites that jumped in there are gonna charge here into these power suits. Looking like that. So let's move over the camera. So again, hitting on a three with rending. That's a lot of sixes. So I ended up with six rending hits and nine regular hits. So the rending hits saving on a six. So there goes four boons and then the rest save on a four. So just three more. So that's going to be one, two and one, mm. leaving him at two wounds. Fighting back with a hammer, hitting on a three. And it hits, that's a blast, so it's going to be three hits. Saving on a four. It's gonna take out two. So, morale test for the suit. Ooh, and it's gonna be pinned. Or no, and it's gonna take off running because there's less than half. So what we got going on over here, these power suits, they have the storm rifles and the limited grenade launcher. So they are gonna fire their storm rifles at those three guys there. And then their grenade launchers at that squad back there. So let's uh, set the camera here. So rifles hitting on a three. Four hits. AP1, so saving on a five. There goes all of them. So blah, 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 blah. And then grenade launcher, we got three shots hitting on a three two of them those hits saving on a four. Ooh, so one two three four five of those are going to be gone before i even pull them morale test time they're going to pass one two three four five ah my boys so soul snatchers turn over here these matriarch two Xenos left, you're gonna charge into those gun drones. So at the moment we are not going to cast anything, hold on to those casting dice. So let's do some attacks. Hitting on a three with rending. So we got that many hits, no rendings. Save it on a five. One, two, three, four, there'll be one gun drone left. One attack, and it hits. <clears throat> Save it on a four. And it passes. So morale test for the gun drone. It's gonna fail, but it is fearless. And it's gonna stick around. So those guys just pull back an inch. So over here, the dwarf walker is gonna move to there and fire at those soul snatchers. Six shots on a three. Okay, we got three hits. These are the elites, so they're gonna be saving on a four. And they save them all. Now it's time for the last activation of turn two. This matriarch is just going to plow into the shotgunners and cast a psychic spell on the way. We're gonna pull off psychic blaze again on a four and fail. Good job. Four attacks on three. So we got three hits with one rending, one on a six and the rest on a five. So they're gonna lose, oop. So they're gonna lose two. And then the little bugger is going to pile in. Ah! Six attacks on a four. Takes two hits. Saving on a three. It's going to take one wound. Morale test for the dwarfs. And they're going to be fine. So backs up. Put it down to two. 
Raffle dudes are gonna fire. Two shots. One hit. Saves. So over here, we're gonna start with those dwarf warriors in the back firing their rifles into those elite snatchers on four. <laughs> Somehow we still stacked it. So we got four hits. Normal saves a three, that pushes it to a four. We're gonna lose three. Oh no. And then Chungus there is gonna turn and fire. Six shots on a three. Ooh, move the camera. So we got four hits, AP one, saving on a four. So I lose two more. So morale test on a three, and they're gonna fail. Meaning that they get the dreaded marble of stunned. And then last activation, the little drone that could. Two shots on a four. One hit. Fails. Thud. <laughs> Which means another morale test. And they're going to pass. Turn number two, the ambushers for both sides came in. And the soul snatchers seemed kind of lackluster. Running into the dwarf walker and mostly bouncing. Didn't really see that coming. And then the dwarf power suits able to pull off, splitting their fire and just devastating a couple units was what dwarfs do best. Moving on to turn number three. Opening activation of turn number three, we are gonna charge over into the dwarf walker. So we got eight of them in there, hitting on a three, AP one with the rending and we have one, two, Three, four, five sixes. So if the rending's on a six, he takes three there. And then for the rest, saving on a three. Two more. So a total of five stomps. So we got three hits at AP one. Saving on a four. <laughs> they lose two. And then the fists at AP two. Hitting on a three. Reroll that one. It's not in the bucket. Uh, Reroll it again, it's not in the bucket. So we got two hits. Saving on a five. Two more. So, so it ends up being four to five. He's got fear of two. The walker wins combat. And the soul snatchers are good. But we got to pull three, four. And then pull them back an inch. And the big guy is down to seven. So over here, those shotguns, they are going to rack again and fire at the Matriarch on a four. Oh, I got a couple. Ooh, that's a lot of missing. Yes, but she only has two wounds. Yeah, she only got, she only got two left. So AP minus one, she's a three, <clears throat> goes to a four. That's enough. Scree, scree. All right, thinking about the mission. These guys, they could definitely kill that, but... These power suits are more expensive mission-wise, and they are just in range. So, this way, they're going to be stuck in combat there. So now we got some psychic shenanigans to pull off. We're going to say that one that is left is the one that now has two points, and he is going to give us Furious on a three, and of course, fail. And then we're going to try to do the psychic blast again to give them six hits. That's going to hit. And we're going to move the camera. There we go. Six armor saves on three. They take a whole whopping one. So now their attacks on a three. Okay, we got four hits. Saving on a four. Take one more. And that's it. Now their attacks back. Hitting on three. Four all three. So now it is blast of three, but there's only two of them left. So that's going to be a blast of two three times. And because the hero is there with a different armor save, we're going to have to do it like this on a four. So, yeah, just like that. Bang. And then threes for the matriarch. Matriarch's going to be fine. So, overall, the matriarch won combat. This did two of these guys. One back to that squad. And they pass their morale test. So, over here, Wally is moving over <laughs> to blast into that. That'll, oh, let's see what happens. That'll teach you to ignore me. Ah, two shots. <laughs> up. <laughs> see, well, well, that's why we weren't looking at you. 
You just have fun over there, buddy. <laughs> Last activation for the Soul Snatchers. They're going to uh, recover, but they're probably going to get shot to pieces. And we're going to start with the dwarves firing their rifles. Five shots on a four. We got three hits, pushing the elites up to a four to save. They save all three. Now, Soul Snatchers are done, so we can just move right on into that dwarf walker. Who is going to charge right in there? So we have four attacks with the stomp. <laughs> oh, four hit. Oh, God. Save it on the four. There goes two. And then with the fist. AP2. Yeah, AP2. Two hits. Save it on the five. One more. So one, two, three. Go down. That one soul snatcher is going to fight back. And one hit. AP1. Ha! Take that one wound. And then morale test. It's sticking around. And then over here, we got the power suits there. You look at this matriarch and go, you did what? And shoot at her. One, two, three misses. The rest save on a four. One, two, three. Blap! And then the last thing over here, we're going to have the dwarf walker fire. It's twin heavy machine guns into the last remaining snatchers over here on a three. One miss. AP one, look for four. So two go down. Yep, yep. Morale test. They're gonna be fine. So turn number three did not go in the Soul Snatchers' favor, um, like at all. So we're just gonna see if the doors are gonna be able to pull off a tabling. Moving on to turn four. So over here, uh, rawr. Rar, <laughs> Jesus. Rar, Rar back. Rar, Splat. <laughs> saw, saw that coming. And over here. Rar, <laughs> Smash. <laughs> I've reverted to sound effects. What is this, like, old Batman cartoon? Pow! Bang! Crash! Zoinks! <laughs> so, final score in the scenario that I made up. 445 points to 2,000 points for a Dorf Guild victory. Now, is this indicative of the Soul Snatchers? army absolutely not this was just me building to a theme that i thought was going to be cool and as you could tell looking at what we did there at the end it was fun all the way until the end and that is the point of the game to go out and have fun so if there are any veteran soul snatchers out there that want to tell some war stories or give some advice down in the comments have at it but that'll do it for us out here in the garage i hope you guys are having fun playing opr wherever you are and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.